Hi everyone, my name is Megan Paluzzi and I'm a student at Russell Sage College. This project is entitled Saving Democracy One Screen at a Time and per pandemic tradition, it is recorded on Zoom. We all know 2020 has been the chillest year ever. Just kidding, we've had the COVID-19 pandemic as well as the 2020 presidential election and murder hornets. Let's not forget the super long list of problems that have built up over time within our country that we really need to address. Now, we want to change the world. The data shows if you look between 2014 and 2018, there was a big increase in voter turnout for the midterm elections. Starting in 2014, people, I mean, starting in 2018, rather, you see that people really stepped it up. Furthermore, if you look closely, for the age group 18 to 29, we saw a 15.7% increase in voter participation for that midterm election, which is greater than any of the other age groups. Now that's impressive. But how do you change a shutdown world, a world where all these businesses are closed, a world where your class is online? The answer is college campus digital organizing. Now, how do you do that? If we look at Democracy Matters and Sage Votes, two organizations that I've worked with this past year. Now, Democracy Matters is a nonpartisan national organization founded in 2001 by Adana Foyle. Now, Adana was really fed up with this idea that young people didn't care. The truth is we care so much about our future and what will happen to our country, but the way things are aging, it's not really accessible for us anymore to get that information, to participate in elections. So that's where Democracy Matters comes into play. It's campus-based, meaning that there are chapters throughout the country that are similar to a college club. So in the colleges and high schools across our nation, there are different chapters of students who are passionate about getting the big money out of politics and putting the people, especially the young people, back in. There are different internship opportunities, which I took advantage of last semester, and I really learned so much about digital organizing. Then of course, there's the link here for Democracy Matters, but don't worry, all these links that I'm gonna mention will be uploaded to the idea exchange portion of my presentation. Sage Votes is an organization based on Russell Sage College, again, that's my school, in Albany and Troy, New York. It's made of students, faculty, and staff who are super passionate about getting our students involved in this election. We focus on voter registration, awareness and participation. And again, there's our website if you're interested. Our goals for fall 2020 in terms of SAGE votes were outlined in our voter-friendly campus report, which you can also find in my project. So our goals were to provide engaging programs that educate and empower students to be civically involved, create virtu virtual and socially distanced activities that build access to students' understanding of voter rights, absentee ballots, process and registration that address and eliminate barriers to voting and increase voter turnout. And to develop a structure where student advocates lead programs and conversations that are supported by faculty and staff. My personal goals for Democracy Matters and ones that our national chapter, well, our national organization have established was to reestablish a Democracy Matters chapter on the Russell Sage College campuses, provide support to students before, during, and after the election, and to begin campaigning for HR1 or the For the People Act. However, it's so hard to participate in student activities during the COVID-19 pandemic, especially when you have limited amount of people in room, that was constantly changing, as well as you needed to be distanced, masks worn at all time, you can't have outside food. There were no in-person club fairs, limited event spaces, lots of paperwork and contact tracing, and of course, unexpected quarantines. With virtual programming, although it's safer, students have Zoom fatigue. If they're in class all day on Zoom, they're probably not gonna, going to want to sit in on a boring Zoom lecture at night. And of course, there are technical difficulties because when are there not? Advertising can also be an issue, especially for remote students. Then there are the copyright problems with watch parties, and then there are the camera shy people or the people who don't know when to interrupt or they don't wanna interrupt or the people who talk too much on Zoom. And that really results in limited participation in your events. And of course, there are limited incentives. 
So usually to get students to come to events, you would have free food, but alas, it's really hard to do that. But we still have all these problems that we need to address. So let's make a difference. First things first, establish your connections. If you take away anything from this presentation, I need you to know it's so important to find passionate people and to use them as your team. There's not one person driving this. Again, I'm part of two organizations that are working together to make sure that our voices are heard to make sure that what we want to see in our country happens. So again, teamwork is so important. It is not one driving force. And you've got to use the resources that you establish in those connections and networks. So for organization resources, Democracy Matters was really great at providing us with amazing flyers, amazing um, political cartoons, information that we could share and use on our social media pages or in email letters. Um, we also interact with other chapters through a DM Leaders Facebook group. This is all the interns. Um, as you can see on the right hand side here, there's a post. We share pretty much everything with each other um, about our clubs, whether it's a presentation we saw, a movie that we liked, a flyer that we created. So we really have that connection, even in a year where we can't meet up at a summit. You could also collaborate with other institutional departments, such as the Thrive Initiative at Russell Sage, or if you have a diversity and inclusion department, um, a gender studies department, a political science department, they can always help. And you wanna find local organizations or activists. Are there any alums? Are there any local organizations like the League of Women Voters? And of course, you wanna research those national resources that you're using and will probably be giving out to students, especially ones like vote.org, or somewhere where they can figure out how to register to vote. Then you wanna advertise these resources. We had a virtual club fair, thankfully, because we couldn't have an in-person one. So it was great to recruit members that way. I also love the platform Canva. That helps to make these professional looking flyers or even social media posts super easy and user-friendly. Also utilize department outreach. Again, those connections that I mentioned before Connect with them again, see if they know anyone that would love to get involved. Joan Mandel, the executive director of Democracy Matters sends out a newsletter to all the interns every month. It's her e-news thing and she talks all about what we're focusing on for the next month. And it's a great way to get that information and also an easy way to spread that information with other members or people within your community. Contact free campaigning was a huge thing because the less exposure you have to other people, the safer. So one thing we used was stall stories. Democracy Matters likes to call it poly politics, potty politics, but um, because it's one of those things that people are gonna look at them if you hang up an, inform an informative flyer on the back of a stall door in the bathrooms. QR codes are also easy because instead of sharing um, pencils or papers with people, this way people can just scan QR codes with their phone. Free merchandise is good. We were able to get some amazing brownies and cookies from our dining hall staff so it was safe and approved by student activities. And we could slap on a sticker with a QR code to bring them to the Sage Votes page. Social media is also super important. I like to think energize, connect, and interact. Energize by telling the people what you care about, what your mission is, and why they should care too. Connect, get people involved in what you're doing. We had this I Vote campaign with Sage Votes where students would fill in the blank of I Vote Because and take a picture and send it on social media. Interacting is great. So again, I mentioned a Facebook group um, and, and our Facebook group, which is my Democracy Matters at Sage Facebook group, not the DM Leaders national one. We're able to have a mega thread for each debate where we could all comment our thoughts in live time. Zoom events. They can kind of sound unappealing at first, so you really got to get creative with them. One thing we did was politics in pajamas. Rather than having an event at 3 p.m. or right after class at 5, we held it a little bit later so students could take a break from their homework and learn something. We had three different series and different politicians, activists would come in on Zoom in their pajamas and share what their mission was, um, how college students could get involved, issues within our society or in our government and how we can fix them. 
We also held watch parties. We had a Hamilton watch party because we have a lot of students who love that show. Um, and we were able to bring in an activist and alum, Teresa McCallman, as well as the executive director, Joan Mandel of Democracy Matters, to talk about different causes that we're working on. For debate night, we would generate bingo cards. If they got bingo, which we made with our bingo baker here, you can also find that in my documents, um, then they could take a picture of their card that's completed and DM us on Instagram. For in-person events, you should always have a remote option, but it's also good to try for those in-person events just to get people out of their rooms and connect. For National, Re for National Voter Registration Day, we had some free merchandise out. We were able to canvas the whole campus and spread ideas as well as resources for how to get involved, how to, how to register to vote, how to make a voting plan. Then we also had these free treats, masks, touch keys. SAGE engaged our annual volunteer event. It was a great way for students to not only register to vote or make their plan once more, but it was also a way to get students to volunteer to be on the other side of things, to show how they can inspire others and motivate them to get involved. Floats and Votes is my personal favorite. This is one of the ones where you really want to get those connections out there. So we connected with our theater department and we got three amazing performers to do a parody election, much like you would find on SNL. So we had three performers, one performed as Leslie Nope, one as Peppa Pig, and one as Barbie. They did a little mock debate where audience members and a panelist could ask them a question that you would probably hear in an actual debate, but they would answer as the character would. At the end, while they were sipping root beer floats provided by the dining hall so it was nice and safe, they were able to vote on a ballot that we created that resembled the New York State ballot for the 2020 election. In the end, Barbie ended up winning. Post-election is still super important. The election is never a finish line. So for inauguration, we had a live stream. There were party packs provided by the Women's Institute at Siege. There were social media takeovers, and we even got some news coverage. Um, we had a live stream where everyone could chat in the little text box or messaging feature, rather, of Facebook and really share what was inspiring to them. Political wellness is also something that we needed to discuss. Please, please, please check out this site. Um, it is our post-election resources page tailored for Russell Sage College students, but really anyone can use them. Uh, we had a post-election reflections event where we brought in panelists, and it was a great way for students who, during this high-stakes election, had an opportunity to connect with ways where they could focus on their own wellness, get involved in community wellness, and really have that opportunity to continue the fight even after the ballot is cast. Again, you wanna keep it up. Hold people accountable after the election. This semester, we're focusing a lot on letter writing workshops, open forums, digital lobby, lobbying, petitions, and discussions. We're also using themed months. So some months have themes and you can take advantage of that. For example, Black History Month was a great opportunity to highlight different Black activists and what work they've contributed to our country. There are also workshops to inspire people to run for office themselves. When you collaborate with other organizations, again, those connections are so important. It really makes these events thrive. And with the results in, it shows that digital organizing works. Locally, 80.6% of students reported voting in, a, in the 2020 presidential election. If our optional survey accurately reflects the National Study of Learning, Voting, and Engagement data that will be released soon, then that's a 10% increase from the 2016 election. Nationally, we had the largest voter turnout in history. Almost 160 million people voted. That's about two out of three eligible voters. And in every single state, our voter turnout increased. In New York State, it increased by 6.1%. That's amazing. That shows that it works. Look at the dramatic increase on the graph. <laughs> but yes, thank you all so much for watching. Please check out all the other documents that I'm uploading for this idea exchange. Now it's your turn to change the world. And if you ever have questions, please feel free to contact P-A-L-U-Z-M at sage.edu. Now let's go get them.